I said, is there a witness in the house? What does a witness do? A witness testifies for what they know to be true. Yes, Jesus. This far. Now, Lord, my request is simply help me to preach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to talk for just a few minutes and get out of here. 
from the subject. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. pass the peace. Pass the peace. Look at the other neighbor. Say neighbor, neighbor, pass the peace. Pass the peace. When we have finished one year and begin to look at a new one, uh, there are many things that us as do to bring us good luck. Our society has a variety of good luck rituals. These are the things that we do to bring ourselves good luck. The, game, the gambler thinks that blowing on dice will bring him some luck. Someone else wants to rub the hand of a lucky person hoping that some of their luck rubs off on them. Then you have others who wears a rabbit's foot on a keychain for good luck. You even have some people a part of society that put dimes around their ankles as a sign of good luck. Looking for luck is something universal. On New Year's Day it is said that a helping of black eyed peas on a plate guarantees good luck. <laughs> All right? That's what they say. So Y'all soaking the peas right now. Washing your collars right now. Many people laugh at the custom, but guess what, Brother James? They serve the peas anyway. Just in, case, just in case there's some truth to the whole saying. In the African American community, we celebrate Jubilee Day on January 1st. It is the day that freed slaves in rebelling states on January 1st, 1863. To commemorate Jubilee Day, black folk would eat some slavery food. They need some hog jaws, some chitlins, hog balls, and some tripe. And it is said that those who forget where they come from and choose not to eat this dinner on Jubilee Day will have bad luck and be returned back to slavery. Now, we know for tonight that's not the truth, but guess what? We put on our plate anyway. Pass in peace. Depending on your cultural background, different foods come uh, with a new year. Cabbage, herring, honey, sardines, and salt are seen as good luck signs in some areas in the country. The Japanese eat long noodles. The Greek make a special cake. In Spain, the custom is to eat 12 individual grapes 12 seconds before the new year. Uh, anthropologists say that eating certain foods to change one's fortune dates back to Babylonia. Y'all still with me? <laughs> Looking for luck, even those who claim not to believe in luck, you know what they still going to say on the morrow? Pass me peas. <laughs> While some spend their time looking for luck eating peas and dashing salt over of the doorposts and killing hogs and eating hog balls and shitless, there are some folk who don't count on luck because they know that it was not luck that woke them up. It wasn't luck that blessed them all year long, but they heard. Get out! 
perform that all he alone. This passage of scripture is written, Psalm 65, is written at the conclusion of a great year. The people assemble themselves together like we're doing here this morning. And they look back on the wondrous ways of how God had blessed them in the previous year. And they gave him thanks. Success in the biblical times depended heavily upon the rain. And now if there is no rain, then they would not have any success because their success came from crop being grown. Right? But this particular year, God blessed them with enough rain so that they had a good year. Now let me pause right here because some of us said, well, I didn't have some rain too. You ought to thank God for the rain you had this year because it was watering some seeds that you didn't even know was planted. You ought to thank God for that tear you cried this year because it was watering some seeds that you did not know God had planted. But can I declare and speak prophetically over your life today that some of those seeds that God planted this year, oh, they're coming to pass in this coming year. He's about to give you some of the very things you have planted and you have sown in this year. You ought to thank God that you've been sowing in faith all year long. At the end of the season, therefore, they assemble together to give God praise for what was ahead. Mm -hmm. The meaning of this passage is associated with five words, and all of those five words begin with the letter P within the first four verses. Uh, the first verse says, praise awaited for thee. Mm -hmm. As the people look forward to, coming to, the, to the coming of a new year, uh, they picture in their mind that God has been so good to us just this year, even when we were not good to him. So at least what we can do is give him praise for bringing us through when he did not have to. At least what we can do right now is give him praise because it was nobody but him that had put us together, brought us out of a new year, and now he's blessing us with a new season. They opened up saying praise waited for you. I wonder if there's anybody that came to White Oak this morning with a praise in your heart and a praise on your lips that say, God, for the last 365 days of the year you've been with me. For the last 365 days of the year you provided for me. For the last 365 days of the year you made ways out of no way. Somebody shout praise. Praise. Right? Second praise. The second P we see is perform. Somebody say perform. Perform. It's in verse number one. As they as they look to the future, they remembered the vows that they made during difficult times during the preceding year. Can I just pause the room? Anybody have some difficulty this year? Yeah. Yes. I just want to pause the room. Anybody had a moment where you felt like giving up this year? Mm. Let me see your hand. Mama. 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 Anybody in the room that says this year there was a few times when you said, I'm about to forget all of this and I'm about to go do my own thing. Come talk to yes. me. Yes. Anybody in the room that said, I forget about them. Yes. They were not there when I needed them. And now they want me to be there when they need me. Forget about them. Yes. I wish I would try to do anything I got to do. And when I call them, they didn't pick up the phone for me. When I needed them, they wouldn't return. Am I in the right house this morning? Is there anybody that says, I done been through some stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody to say you done dealt with some frustrations? Yeah. Now, 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 this one you don't have to be honest about it. And is there anybody to say you done got yourself in some your own mess this year? Yeah. Yes. That too. And you know how we do. You know what? You know how us is do because cause, 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 I, I ain't gonna look at nobody right now. But this, this is how we do. Lord, if you get me out this time. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
Lord, if you just bring me out this time, I promise I'm going to praise you forever. Lord, and then when you come to church, you, you sit right tight. <laughs>
Somebody say iniquities. Iniquities is that stuff you get your own stuff into. Iniquities are those sins that you just Oh Lord have mercy. Iniquities is that little taste of temptation that you want. Come talk to me now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he talks about those. He says he says, but the word prevail. Watch this now in the English language. The word prevail means it has control over you. But let's go back a couple thousand years because this biblical text was not written in English language. It was written in the Hebrew translation. And the word uh, prevail in Hebrew is gabar. Somebody say gabar, gabar. Which means strong, mighty, and powerful. So what are you trying to tell me this year? I'm trying to tell you God's about to give you some strength this year. He's about to make you powerful this year. And everything going to try to come up against you. He's going to give you the gabar. He's going to give you the power to prevail over everything Man, that comes your way. Yeah. Church folk don't know when to shout. That was your shouting moment. That God's getting ready to give you everything you need to make it good on the other side. He's getting ready to give you the power that you need to succeed in this next year. Somebody ought to throw your head back and say, Lord, Give it to me, Father. Last P. Last P. I'm trying to come in. Last P. We see in verse number three. It is purge. Man. Uh, now, when I grew up, I grew up in a Methodist church. <laughs> we were Methodist and Pentecostal. Mm -mm. Holiness and all of them. Mm. <laughs> Revival season. They, mothers would get around the altar. All right. mm. And they say, call Jesus. Mm. Call him again. Mm. Jesus, Jesus. Mm. See, I know I'm young, but I got the Holy Ghost old. Mm. And they say, Jesus, call Jesus. Thomas. Call him. Yeah. And then the musicians would start playing with the sky. They say, ah, stop. Because this got, they got to make sure it's for real. They say, Jesus. Come on then, now. Then, then after a while, then I got right nervous, Patrice. I would see some of, some of, some folk around the altar. Get the trim. Come on now. Come on. Get the trim. Get the trim. Get the trim. And they go out in Jesus' name, but they get the frosting at the mouth. Y'all, y'all ain't never seen none of that. Come on, bro. Come on. Me and my seven-year-old self. What is that? Tell it now. My, my. And some of us got some stuff up in us. Yes. Son. I don't care how good you look, how good your wig look today, how good your eyelashes look, I don't care how well you smell, how clean your shoes is. Some of us got some stuff on the inside that God says, before yes. I give you what you desire, before I open this next door, some of that stuff going to have to come yes. up out of you. I'm going to have to purge you. Uh, 
Procrastination. Nothing hinders progress more than procrastination. Mm -hmm. We procrastinate when we set goals and we keep putting them off every yes. step of the way yes. in order to receive them. All right. You know, somebody said, don't just talk about it. Be about it. Okay, we in the right house. Be about it. There can be no progress unless you first decide, decide to move toward your destiny. One writer put it this way, the best way to start realizing your dreams is to wake up. Mm -hmm. Oh, my my, my. I'm going to say that one more time. The best way to start realizing your dreams is to wake up. The truth of the matter is millions of dreams are lost each year because of procrastination. The procrastinator is the person who has the wisdom and the know-how to do what to do, but they don't do it. They wait on you and everybody else. They wait on somebody else. They wait on anybody else. They wait on everybody else. But if there's anybody in the room that says, this year I'm about to wake up. Yeah, because I've been sleeping on myself. I'm about to, as a matter of fact, you need to wake up too because you've been sleeping on me too. Yeah, there's so much stuff locked up in this room. There's so many dreams and so much destiny locked up in this room as I'm preaching right now. And it will never come to pass if you don't wake up. So I give you the authority right now to nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time to wake up. You want to tell your neighbor, good morning, get up. It's time for you to get back to the dream. It's time for you to get back to the vision. It's time for you to get back to the goal. It's time for you to get back to what you know God has already promised you. You will never get to it if you stay asleep. You want to tell your neighbor around you, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Somebody needs to hear your voice. Wake up. Somebody needs to hear your testimony. Wake up. Somebody needs your business. Wake up. Because God is not through with you yet. If you think he was through with you, he'll put you to sleep. It's time. My, my. God, God, how am I going to start my business when you wake up? Tell yeah. uh -huh. your neighbor, procrastination got to go. <laughs> Proverbs, Proverbs 27 and 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what the day may bring. You ain't got no more time to wait. And see, this is the problem. Lord, thank you. But us, many of us, is waiting on Pookie, and we waiting on our friend Boo, and we waiting on this person, and we waiting on quit waiting on people. Mama. If they don't stay asleep, let them stay asleep. But you need to wake up because at the end of the day, this is about you and what God is taking you. If they want to sleep, let them nap. But you need to wake up. I, I, I know it hurt. I, 
I know they dogged you. I know they knocked the wind out of you. I know what they said was a lie. I know they tried to block your blessing. I know they tried to make you make a mistake. I know you made a wrong turn on your own somewhere. I know you stayed a little too long when God told you to leave. But listen, let it go. Let it go. Uh-huh. I'm telling you, they go pass the pee. Pass the pee. That's the one you need to pass to the trash. Pass the pee. God says today, let it go. Because my grace is sufficient. And because my grace is sufficient, you're covered.
yes, Lord. They talked about the P of prayer. They talked about the P of performance. And I double dog death somebody this year. I'm challenging you this year to pray instead of worrying. I'm challenging you this year to pray instead of stressing. I'm challenging this year, you this year to pray instead of complaining. And when you learn how to pray instead of complaining, God will begin to trust your word. And when he trusts your word, there will be a performance. He will do what he said he's going to do. He will show up and show out. He will turn things around. He will fix that which is broken. I got good news for you today. The good news is that the Lord is still able to make a way. I got good news for you today. The good news is that God is still on the throne. And if he still can make a way, and if he's still on the throne, that means there's nothing too hard for him. Fourth praise, fourth P in the closing is the P of praise. Yes. Watch this. They praise God. Come on. They prayed God before the year began. Yes. Uh -huh. For what he was going to do throughout the year. All right. So, 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 all right. They offered God in praise advance. in January for what he was going to do in October and September. All right. They didn't wait until they got there to give him praise, but they gave him praise before the new year began because they understood that their praise could go to places that they might can't get into just yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They offered praise on the first Sunday in January because they knew they was going to need them on the last Sunday in December. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we should praise <laughs> My, my. Uh, because his grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. We, 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 we should praise the Lord. Ooh. Mm. I wish I had a voice today. Come on now. Come on. Come on I wish I had a voice. Praise. But we ought to praise the Lord yes. because his love is always abundant with us. Yes. We ought to praise the Lord because his mercy is everlasting. Yes. And his truth still endures. We, we ought to praise him because he made us a promise. Is there anybody in the room that got a promise from God this morning? It may not have come to pass just yet. But you know that if you keep on praising. And if you keep on praying. God is going to make good on his word. They praise the Lord for the burdens that he was going to lift off their shoulders. And I wonder. Is there anybody assembled at 1281 West Rebound Road that says, I got a praise on the inside for the hills? He's going to help me to climb. I got a praise on the inside for the bills. He's going to help me to pay. I got a praise on the inside for the joy. Oh! 
He's going to do it. My God. He's going to do it. Yes. He's going to do it. I hope you wasn't expecting nothing else. No. Nah. Yes, he's going to do it. He's going to perform it. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Yes. My Jesus. Because there's some stuff that you've been waiting and you're like, told and I God, win, 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 win. And yes. You say, I'm going to do it, but you owe me something. Ah. Yeah. I'm going to expand the business, but you owe me something. Oh, I didn't know I hear that. I just hear this. Uh -huh. I'm going to expand the business. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come Thank on. You, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Dad. Speak, Lord. Yeah. I, I, yes. I'm going to do it. I believe that. Yes. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Wow. Let's Thank see, you, Will. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he will. 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 Jesus. Jesus. I, I see it. Bless him, Jesus. I'm going to do that table, but I see it. Bless him. Bless him. Somebody signed a new deed. I don't know. But I hear the Lord say, you've been praying for it. I'm getting ready to do it. Yes. Do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. But you owe me. You owe him. You owe me. Glory. Glory. You owe me. He says, I've already paid the price. Yeah. But you still owe me. Yes. Right. Yes. And he actually asking for us to pay a dime. Mm. Oh, thank you, Lord. Just give him praise. You know what I hear you saying? You owe him. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yeah. From the bottom. Oh, my, my, my. That's what he wants. Yes. Not gonna cost you a dime. Hallelujah. Help me 
he get ready to do it. Tell your neighbor beside you, don't worry, he about to do it for you. He about to do it. He about to do it. He about to do it. And then guess what he gonna do? He gonna fill you with power. He gonna fill you with power. I'm praying over every person around this altar that in this next year, you're gonna be able to walk in the rooms and change atmospheres. You're gonna be able to walk in the bank and they already have their mind made up and God can change their mind. Spirit! 